All right, welcome back. Now we're going to look at the second part from lesson two. The power is coming in and out here, so hopefully this will go through. Um, this is a pretty easy part. Uh, we only have a few ge pieces of geometry here. Most of these are angular dimensions. And so let's get started. So open up SolidWorks, and we're going to start by creating a new part. Uh, it doesn't specify, but this part is actually in inches, again, just like the last one. So click on inch, pound, second. And then we're going to go again onto, let's do it on the front plane this time. So create a sketch on the front plane. And one thing that you'll notice here when you look at this is that both this top corner and this bottom corner are both vertically aligned with the origin of this part, or with what I want to call the origin of this part. So I'm going to start at this top corner, and I'm just going to draw the basic outline of this all the way around. And then when I get down here, I'll add the little circle at the bottom. All right. So let's go back and we'll draw that basic shape. So starting above the origin, I'm just gonna come out at an angle and I'm gonna come down here, just kind of nice and far. And then if I pull this off, just kind of at like a little arc, you should see it should transfer me to the arc tool, just like that, you see that? And then I can come across to here, snap that, and then go back to the line tool. Again, I'm coming back up and this kind of comes up and then it has a little bit of a neck to it and then comes back across. That looks pretty good. Let's check that shape versus our basic outline. So again, as long as we have like this, the right number of lines here, this is going to work out fairly well. Uh, let's go and start putting in some angular dimensions now. Uh, it might be a good idea to add your reference lines, for the vertical and horizontal as well, just give us some better reference point. So let's go ahead and go and create a center line. So I'm going to make a vertical center line. Okay, I want this to be vertical. It doesn't look like it's giving me quite lined up there, but I can add that in there later. And then let's make a horizontal one as well. So let's go and make a horizontal center line. I'm just going to make that through the origin. And I'll use that later, perhaps, or maybe I'll just I might not need it. Who, would, who knows? It's good to have those kind of there to give us some starting points. All right, now let's look at some of the angles here. So this first top angle coming from the vertical line is 50 degrees, and that's in both sides. So let's go ahead and do those two. So 50 degrees here, 50, and then 50 degrees here, 50. And again, this line here is just kind of shrinking and kind of killing our bottom circle. So let's fix that real quick. So I'm just going to drag these points out to make them a little bit bigger so we can see them again. I'm going to make sure that that circle is centered on my vertical center line. So I'll make sure I just have the only the point that I want selected. So I get rid of that point 0.5. So let's go to the center of the circle and then make that coincident with my vertical center line. That looks much better. I also want this corner to be tangent with this line here. So let's unselect those guys, and we'll select these two lines and make them tangent. That looks a little better. And then if we come back to our sketch here, we look at this bottom, this is that 0.125 typical round, so I can make sure this has a radius of 0.125. So 0.125. All right, we're already starting to look a lot like our existing sketch there. So let's look at the rest of the angles we have to find. So this is actually a four degree angle across these two bottom lines, and then it's symmetric, so there's a two degree angle from the right to the left. So let's place that there. That's equal to four. And then the angle between this line and this line is gonna be equal to two. We wanna switch this to their side first. Let's actually escape that and then we'll exit the dimensional tool. I want you to kind of draw this, drag this back across. We should be able to get this uh, over to the other side. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm still in the dimensioning tool, sorry. So exit the smart dimension tool. And then I just want to drag this and just get it kind of centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then when I add this dimension in, it'll make a little bit more sense. Again, where I place this dimension is important, so let's delete that. 
And I want to make sure I get in between those two lines. So click the center line and then the right line, place it in between. And then after it's placed, we can go ahead and move it across and then change the value to make it that two. Yeah, it looks better. All right, so far so good. Now, what other dimensions we have on here, we should have a 20 degree dimension between the vertical line here and this side line. So let's add that. So this should have a value of 20 degrees. And again, once that's placed, then you can move it wherever you want it. Um, but it's good to make sure you have the same dimension as given. And then the length of this top head is one inch. So I can actually just click on this line itself, drag it up and then give that a value of one. And then the total height of this object from the top to the center of this bottom circle is six inches. So let's add that. So top to the bottom center. Oh. Again, if we want to, we can probably get the circle there instead of the center, if it's hard to find that center point there. Type in six. And that's starting to look pretty good. It moved our whole uh, point up a little bit, so we're no longer centered on this. Uh, see what other dimensions we have to give us this. Oh, see here we have the dimension here that shows us the distance between the center of where this circle is going to be to the top of this. And that should be also equal to our origin. So let's go ahead and create that. So this distance here should be equal to one. It's just gonna shift the whole thing down and notice it turned black at the same time. So now we know that we're good as far as this portion of the part. So I'll accept that. And then we need to extrude this. Um, I want to make sure that this extrude is actually lined up with the bottom of this head. So I'm gonna use a mid plane extrude. So I have equal amounts of the material going on either side and I pull this over a little bit. You can see the thickness of this is this 0.25. So I'm gonna make the thickness 0.25 inches. I'll accept that. And then if I want to, I can add the rounds now or I can wait and add them later. I can go ahead and add them at the end since I also have this bottom lip that I want to round. So the next thing we need to make is this uh, domed cap. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna make another sketch on the same plane as before, the front plane make a new sketch and then I want to make sure that I can revolve this dome about the center there and so let's start by drawing our circle and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to say normal to my current sketch plane the circle is centered right there at the origin and it's going to have a radius of I'll have to double check the dimensions here in a second it's got a radius of 1.25 inches. So I can take this in as 1.25 times two to get that diameter to be correct. And then I'm actually gonna use the convert edges or convert entities to change this edge into a line in the sketch. So I click on the edge and click, a, go to click the check mark to accept that. And then I actually wanna trim out all of the excess stuff here. So I'm actually gonna use the corner trim or the trim to closest then I'm going to click on this line and then the circle oh oh crap that's not the what I wanted to could have been we probably did it in the wrong order so let's do trim uh, let's try the corner trim uh, and we'll click on the edge of the line and then our circle uh, it's not letting me do this because this is a closed circle There should be an option. Let's just take this. We may have to just break this circle real quick. Um, now, so it's not going to let us trim that out. So let's actually drag this out and then we'll trim it. So let's drag this line out and then we'll go through and we'll trim off the excess. So I'll go back into trim. And again, now I can use the power trim if I want to. And just drag that around the sides there. And like that. That looks pretty good. 
Now, if I want to revolve this, I need to make sure I cut away everything except for the center of this. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make a center line. And I want this to be perpendicular to this edge and symmetric. So let's add some constraints there. So I'm going to add a relation. So make sure that this is perpendicular to this surface here. And then I want to make sure it's symmetric with either sides of this circle. And that should put it through our origin here. But if this was offset, then that wouldn't work. So let's look at that. So I have the center line selected and the two side points. Uh, I don't want the arc selected. I want just the points. So make sure we get that point there. And I'll add that symmetric constraint. And see it line that up nicely. So we can take that. And then what we actually want to do is we want to create another line here and then close off this sketch. So we're going to create another line from here to here. And then again, I'm going to trim off this excess side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this in a revolve extrude. So I only want to have uh, my object on one side of my center line. And that'll be my axis of revolution. So accept that. Exit the sketch. And then we want to go into features, revolve, boss, base. We want to do 360 degrees, so we'll accept that. And now we have that domed head. Last thing we want to do is add our fillets. So go into fillet. Again, these were 0.125 typical, so all these fillets are 0.125. And so I'm going to start with the bottom edge here. I'll do this edge there. And then I'll get all of these guys here. And it's almost all the edges on the sketches are going to be rounded. I don't want any of those um, faces. Just make sure you're getting just the edges. So that looks pretty good. I'll accept that and then just look it over to make sure I have all the edges rounded. That looks pretty good. And that's it for this part. Thanks for watching.